Hello and welcome to this new video about Quarkus. My name is Alex Soto and I'm, today I'm going to show you how you can integrate test containers with Quarkus test. Um, test containers is just, you know, a Java library that allows you to manipulate containers in Java. So basically, you can think about it like starting a container and stopping a container and configuring with all the parameters that you might require. The good things about test containers is that it integrates with JUnit. So what you can really do is just create a test and then manage the life cycle of a Docker container within the test. So let's see it with an example. Um, here is an example with um, Quarks and Panache. We've got the you know the typical developer entity where with you have the column I'm extending from an Panache entity, and then I have the developer resource with the get with an with the name parameter uh, parameter which you say just you can return a developer by name, and then we also have a post um, method with transactional annotation because you know you need to persist a developer into a database and then I do just developer.persist and then I just respond you know what to zero one with the developer ID and so on. And then I have this application that properties which basically I'm configuring right uh, let's say my MariaDB in this case I'm using MariaDB for uh, or as a database and um, Let's see, let, let's, you need to think about that these will be the properties that goes to production. So in here, instead of local holiday, we'll have, I don't know, my database dot um, whatever. So I want to write a test. And what I want to do is just use test containers to provide a MariaDB. So instead of having to have installed my MariaDB in all the places that I'm going to run my test, developer machine, um, CI machine, I don't know, any other ma machine that you're thinking about running your test, instead of having to take care of installing MariaDB and be aware of a, having a, an up and running MariaDB in all the places, what I'm going to do is just start uh, use test containers. Because if I use test containers, then I will be able to just make my test know exactly all the dependencies that they require to run it. So basically in my test, I'm going to just start a Docker container, which is going to be a MariaDB. When MariaDB is up and running, I'm going to run all my tests, and then finally I'm going to shut down this Docker container. And to do it, what we need to create is a class that extends um, Quarkus test resource lifecycle manager. Basically, um, this um, interface just allows us to define what we want to execute before any test is executed, and then what we want to execute after all tests. And I want to say all tests in the sense of not just test methods, I mean all test classes, right? So all the test suite. What I want to do when all the test suite has been executed. And in this case, well, I'm just, you know, starting and stopping the, the MariaDB container. So to start, the only thing that I need to do is two things. The first one, adding, um, since I'm using JUnit 5, I need to uh, use the JUnit Jupyter uh, artifact from RG test containers with uh, version 1.11.4. And then since I'm going to use MariaDB and I want to use an special or a, or a special or a specialized class from test containers to deal with MariaDB. So instead of you know having to deal in a generic way, I can just work for uh, MariaDB. So I'm just adding MariaDB art um, artifact from RG test containers as well. Then <clears throat> what I can do now is just you know create a field of kind MariaDB container, which as you can see it comes from test containers, which you know, takes care of everything related to the MariaDB container configuration. So then I, in the star method, notice that this is the Quarkus test resource lifecycle manager. I'm just doing a new MariaDB container with this image. And then I'm just doing a MariaDB start. And then this method will dispatch to Docker host the start of the MariaDB container. And when the MariaDB container is up and running, then it will return. 
And finally, I return these configuration parameters. Notice that this method returns a map. This map is just the properties that I want to use because of this Quarkus Test Resource Lifecycle Manager. So basically what I'm doing is overriding the default properties, right? So in this case, it's really important because the properties are not static, are dynamic. For this reason, I need to return a map and I cannot put it, all these properties inside the application, the properties. So basically I'm saying that the URL is the one that comes from MariaDB container get GDBC URL. And here I'm printing the GDBC URL. So you will understand why it's really important to overwrite this. And then I'm just setting the username and password that comes from the container. So this is the username and password on how the MariaDB container has been started. And then I just return the map. And finally, I've got the stop method, which just, you know, shut down the container. And finally, the, the last thing that I need to do, notice that this is an inner class, an inner static class, in fact. And then I have this public class test containers MariaDB test resource, which using this Quarkus test resource annotation, I'm just setting that I want to initialize or I want to use this initializer class. So basically with this Quarkus test resource annotation, I'm saying, please Quarkus test runner, before running any test, just run this star method, and then after all the tests, please run this method. And this is really important to, I mean that, to put it in a standalone class, let's say it in this way, because remember that uh, Quarkus test resource lifecycle manager are by test suit. So if you put it in a test class, you might be confused that it's only um, modify the behavior of this test, which in reality it modifies the, the behavior of all the tests. And that's all, this is the test. Notice that I'm just saying that this is a Quarkus test and I'm saying that the first test that I want to run is the post and the second one is the get. I mean, this is just for the sake of simplicity. So now I can just go here and just run the test. Maven wrapper, compile test and you'll see interesting things notice that I'm having here docker running and then it's compiling and then I start running the test but notice that this is developer resource test of course and then notice that this this output is from uh, test containers and not from Quarkus it's saying that I'm going to check the system to see that everything um, has the minimal requirements I've got the at least the minimal uh, docker version okay now it's you know checking all the things that needs to check, for example, probably it checks if the image is there or not, etc. Then finally, notice that now the the um, MariaDB container is up and running, and then it just runs the test. Here you see more and more info, and finally it get that the test run are two because it's the post and the get with zero fillers and finally the container is stopped. Um, one thing that is really important is this output. Notice that the port is 32769. For this reason, you cannot use a default static port in the application of properties. The reason is that by default, and you need to, you know, you can change it, but it's quite somehow difficult, but by default, the port binding from test containers are um, random. So it means that it takes the exposed port and just assigns a random port. And this is the way how it should work because, you know, then you can run somehow, you know, several uh, projects from several tests in the same machine. If not, then this Docker host will get it a port binding problem. So for this reason, it get it a random port. And this is just because this reason that since I run again this test, this port will be different, that I need to configure dynamically um, the test by, you know, returning this map. So as you can see, it's really easy to do it. And even you can just create this class once for all the projects that um, are using MariaDB. Hope that you enjoyed the video. If you like it, just thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, or if you want to stay updated with more and more videos, just follow me on Twitter, which is Alex Sotobi. Thank you very much and see you there.